So we've, we've covered some, some definitions. BCG intolerance, is this something that you guys encounter? I get calls from, from our infusion center that, you know, patient X was only able to hold their BCG for like 10 minutes and they're having significant frequency and urgency, bladder spasms. Is this, is this a common clinical scenario? Or actually, how do you tell, what do you tell your patients that are about to start their first course of BCG? What's the probability that this is going to work? And then what does kind of BCG look like? Sure. I think, you know, when I'm talking to folks who've had their initial TURBT, and I think you had your initial podcast with Dr. Sam Chang there, who did a really nice job of discussing what constitutes an adequate evaluation and adequate transurethral resection of a bladder tumor, because I think that's probably the most important thing, as we've alluded to already. After that, you know, now they have some amount of high risk or intermediate risk, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, and you're discussing the options for BCG. And I tell them that we're going to start with an induction course of BCG, which will be given once a week for six weeks, followed by a rest period and then an evaluation, uh, usually about 12 weeks after the initial resection. And that BCG is a medication here that's instilled into the bladder, and it's truly an immunostimulatory agent here. And so because of that, your body has a systemic immune response as well and can actually induce changes within the bladder, but also some systemic side effects as well. I tell a lot of folks that I expect some amount of dysuria, urinary frequency, urgency shortly after the administration. And there can even be flu-like symptoms for about 48 to 72 hours after the administration of BCG. But in general, these are self-limiting and, and should resolve. Additionally, these, these side effects can sometimes be a little bit worse after the first couple of doses for BCG. So it'll get a little bit worse during the treatment while they're undergoing treatment with BCG. But then after that, we'll uh, assess their bladder. You know, there are certainly some folks who can't tolerate BCG, right? I think you're mentioning you, someone gets the BCG and it's just too painful or the side effects are too much and they can't tolerate further doses despite local control. Then these are the folks who you can subsequently deem BCG intolerant. 